Hey everybody, John here at Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamer. So I'm hoping you're having a great Wednesday morning. I know I am, even though I'm a little tired, but that's okay because we got some exciting news to talk about in relation to Atomic Mass Games and Marvel Christ Protocol. So first, let me do some due diligence that I've forgot about and somebody kind of pointed out. If you are not familiar with Atomic Mass Games, they make a game called Marvel Crisis Protocol. This is a tabletop skirmish game using your favorite Marvel characters, not from the MCU, but from the actual comic books. Now, some of the characters might have the classic costumes, some might have the most uh, present costumes, but from the comics, not from the MCU. So this game is probably the most, and you've probably heard me say this before, balanced tabletop skirmish game right now and they've got a lot of great features so one of the one of the features let me talk about a couple of these and then we're going to get into looking at quicksilver this week's release that we were right about which i'll get into that in a minute so one of the features is that after you buy that that main box which i think you can still get by without it but there's some critical cards that you really want to get out of there uh after you buy that main box, you don't have to do anything else. You've got 10 characters to build your roster from. You've got all the dice, all the tokens, the rule book, the measuring um, rule or measuring tools, everything. You're done. You don't have to buy any more unless you want to. You don't have to buy any source books, any rule books, any um, codexes or army books, nothing like that. Every time that you buy a character or a set of characters, it comes with obviously the miniature itself that you do have to assemble. It also comes with their character cards that has all the information to play that character and extra little action cards that you can play during the game and, it, and maybe even some tokens that uh, depending like Doctor Strange um, or Mr. Sinister might have some additional tokens, that sort of thing to represent some of their special abilities. Another feature is that the rules are free online. I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. Uh, they also have the assembly, the transmission, or, or they have the assembly guys here online. They have a gallery with all their miniatures. So you can see a 360 view of all the miniatures. And then, of course, links to the shop and whatnot. They also have uh, their, all their organized play rules. And uh, they have transmissions for... Uh, upcoming model so they really really do a good job of showing off everything about this game they don't leave you wanting really and well except for wanting to have the miniatures <laughs> in your hand so let's take a look at the rule book i'm gonna go ahead and click on it on their website take you right to the rules the rule book is free online it is a pdf you can download it and of course you can go print it off Another cool thing about this rule book, it's only like 30 pages. So you don't have to flip through a 400 page rule book where 300 some odd pages are pictures and background information. And then you get to the last less than 100 pages worth of rules. You get all the rules up front. But they have an FAQ and errata section. If you're seeing this on the screen, some of you I realize are driving and listening to this. But they have an FAQ and errata. So you can just click on that and see what's updated. But if you're wanting just to get the rule book, download it right now. Their FAQ and errata is updated in that online rule book. So if at some point in time you're like, you know what, I'm ready to play. Let's go ahead and take a look at how these rules are before I invest too much into it. You already got everything updated. And the fact that it's free is you can look before you buy, guys. You can look before you buy. You might even be able to play test if you can figure some stuff out. I'm not going to tell you how, you, but you might be able to figure. You know what? I can tell you. I don't work for Atomic Mass Games. Look, on their Facebook page, they're always revealing what the cards do or what, what the character cards are. So there are the rules for all the characters. You have what all the symbols are for the eight sided dice and you can easily assign assign values to that if you don't have their special dice you can get grab some eight sided dice and or even just use uh, a, a online dice roller now that might 
eat up some time, but you can at least play to see what it's like. It's a lot faster if you have the dice because you can just look at the symbol and move the ones you don't need out of the way. But you can still play test the rules if you want before you dive in. Now, are you going to be getting the full effect? No, because you're not going to have access to their special cards that you can play during a game. You're not going to have access to uh, most of the scenarios that you get that comes in the main box or, and sometimes these characters will always have a, not always, but they'll have, usually have a mission, special mission card, whether it's an extraction or it's in a hold objective type of mission. So with that said, they also have multiple game modes. Um, the ultimate encounters is one of them uh, where you basically take on, take three players. You might be able to squeeze in a fourth player, but one player will take on the role of either Ultron for All Will Be Metal or the Incredible Hulk. They'll take on the role of the Hulk. And the other two, maybe three guys, maybe even four if you really wanted to get people involved, Take uh, you divide up your roster of characters amongst those however many players, two or more, or maybe even one if it's just one, one of you playing against it. And you have six, or not six rounds, but you have a number of rounds to complete the objective usually i think it is six rounds but you have to stop ultron or the hulk those are just a couple examples of play they also have tournament formats um arena format and party formats that you can read about so there's a lot that you can do besides normal play of this game and the game itself is centered around playing basically a tournament it is set up to play a tournament Crisis events, they always do those. Um, oh, they even got a, they got their affiliation list. Okay, all right, well, this is cool. And speaking of affiliations, before we go any further, let's take a look at these affiliations. Ooh, goodness. Now these are constantly updated, but the affiliation lists are, uh, I'm actually trying to see if, I uh, don't see, I was wanting to see if uh, Quicksilver and, um, Wanda Maximoff. Oh, they're just listed as Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. They are not listed as Avengers. Interesting. That's well, I guess it's okay because the Avengers roster is pretty gosh darn huge. So can't complain too much. Okay, but anyway, so these are, they have the affiliation roster, so you can start seeing who's on what. And <laughs> we're also got an idea of what's coming up. Colossus. They haven't even shown that character yet, and they just showed that uh, with X-Force, Colossus is going to be joining that. That's incredible. See, sometimes you get a little sneak peeks on here. That's really awesome. What about Juggernaut? Is he going to... No. Oh, there he is, Juggernaut in Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Man, this is a good day. I'm, I'm super excited about this. Sorry, guys. I'm a little distracted. At any rate, so they have the team rosters. They have the organized play. Um, there's, there's just so much that you can do with with this game beyond just, oh, we're just going to battle it out over a scenario. There's a lot that you can do. And they've got so many free references on here. Um, even a ban and restricted list that's for some tournament play. Now, why they um, have it like that, I don't know. Um, I don't know why some of these tactics, they might be a little bit more geared for um, casual play or you know, doing like specific scenario or maybe even... Uh, the ultimate encounters. So enough of this. Give Atomic Mass Games a, a look through, especially that that free rule book, so you guys can have an idea of what I am talking about. So let's get into Quicksilver, because that's what you guys are really here for. So Pietro Maximoff uh, looks like he is just going to be right now in the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. We know that he is an Avenger later on, but they might change that up later on down the line. They might just leave him as a Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. It's whatever they want to do with the character. So let's take a look at his stats. I have looked at both his healthy side, that's on the left-hand side, and his damage side on the right, that uh, nothing seems to have changed. So I'm just going to read off of one of them. So left to right, top to bottom, he's got five health. He's got a long-range movement. He's got uh, his height range, or his height is two. That's pretty standard. He is just a normal human being. And he costs three threat or three points, however you like to word it. I like to say three points. Other people are like, no, 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 it's three threat. Uh, it's just three points. It, I, 
we know what they want. Um, that his defenses are are modest for an average human. He's because he's not invulnerable. He doesn't have like a super suit or um, uh, Iron Man armor or anything like that. So he's got three for physical energy and mystic defense. That's good, considering that he's got some awesome superpower abilities to get out of uh, danger. This is gonna it, it'll work out. But he's still squishy no matter what at the end of the day. So his first ability, is the first attack ability, is the supersonic strike. It has a nice range, three, for a, for a physical attack. Only four dice, so it's a little low on the damage potential, but that's okay. Uh, and it costs zero power. So he's got three different things that trigger under supersonic strike. And these are going to be really good, so please pay attention. So after this attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to the damage dealt. However much damage that his target took, that's how much it is. Now, the reason why I'm stressing that is if you're not familiar, if let's say the character only has three health left and you do five, or let's say you do five damage, you don't get five power. He only had three damage left. So that's all you're going to get. So if you happen to roll the shield dice or the shield symbol and the the critical success symbol during this attack after this attack is resolved this character may advance short range that this is very important because if you also rolled and if i'm reading this symbol right uh, the wild the wild symbol and the regular strike so this basically means you've rolled everything but a blank and the critical failure after this attack is resolved, this character may make a supersonic strike attack. This attack may not target the original target character. There doesn't appear to be any limit to this. The reason why I say it doesn't appear is in their panel to play that came out last week, they made it, they alluded that this can keep going until he doesn't have a target. So you do this, let's say you're lucky enough to activate dash and velocity so and there's a character in range you move short range yeah again that puts you in within range three of a new target not the original target then you can activate supersonic strike if you happen to be able to dash after that you can move again if that and if you happen to have the velocity uh, special ability or rolled up at the same time you guys execute supersonic strike again now, I can't imagine you're going to get off more than two of these because most people don't um, keep their characters that grouped up, but you never know, especially with this long range movement. Who knows, man? Who knows? Uh, but there's potential to keep going, at least to uh, I would say if you get more than two characters, I'll be surprised. Three characters will be rare Four, uh, I don't know. I'll be pushing it because of the dice you need to roll and the range but the fact that you can zip in like that is really impressive uh his next attack is the cyclonic vortex this is another physical attack it is range three it is six dice worth of damage so that's a that's that's good and it only costs two power which is one of the cheapest of their second attacks i've seen on any character so after this attack is resolved this character may advanced range medium that's pretty gosh darn cool you're moving a lot in this with this character. Almost everything you do is move, 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 move. All right, let's get into his superpowers. His, well, his first superpower and only superpower is the speedster. It does not cost an action. This is, this is important, but let's read this first. If this character is not holding the objective token, it advances long range. It can only be used once per turn. The reason why that it doesn't have the action uh, out to the side of it is because you can do two actions normally a turn. So you, and with him be able to move long range, he can do two long range movements. And if he has the power, so it's probably turn two, he can move long range again. So he can move long range three times. He can get across the board and claim objectives really, really quickly. I mean, he might be one of those characters that you activate late every turn because you know he can get somewhere it only costs two power that's that's cheap all right let's get into his reactive power can't catch me this is three power 
so it's a little costly but not too much when this character is targeted by an attack you may use this superpower this character advances short range if at the end of the advance this character is outside of the attacks range or the attackers line of sight the attack ends so <laughs> you're going to want to save some power because this is going to keep you alive a lot longer now if it is the attackers activation and the attack did not target multiple characters the attacker may make another action and you can use this once per turn that's a very good defensive uh, or reactive power that's not too bad three power is is a lot but based on what that allows you to do that could really really hamper the other person basically short range i think it, it's somewhere in between um whenever you're making you have your you have two different types of um uh, range rulers in there one's for movement and one's for actual range of an attack so i think short range movement ruler is somewhere in between a range two or range three attack it's a it's a very short range but it's enough to get you outside of that so his in first innate ability is called supersonic reflexes makes sense that you have this when this character is defending against a physical or energy attack or making a dodge roll like he's getting thrown uh he has something being thrown at him he can re-roll up to two of his defense or dodge dice so that gives him i, I don't know what the percentage is i i, I imagine that's a what 24 percent chance ish of of any failure or, re or of getting successes i guess i think i'll let you guys I'll let you math heads work it out his another other ability is called wall crawler now this was very significant i think i talked about this uh last time especially with scarlet witch so what wall crawler does because we know he doesn't walk up walls like spider-man but it's just a generic term to describe either flight or um uh, ground movement so normally for you to climb up on top of a building let's say or go over terrain if you don't have flight or you don't have wall crawler you're going to use the short range movement regardless of what your movement is normally you're having to use the short range movement that means even if you're getting up on top of a five-story building from the ground floor you're still using the short range now what wall crawler does for him is he doesn't have to use that short range ruler he will be using his normal long range movement and that's because he's just so fast he can sprint right up the side of the building and across without any uh, worrying about anything it's very effortless for him so that is very significant now it doesn't seem like he's super powerful obviously he no he's not he's not super powerful compared to say uh, wanda maximoff but what he does have in his corner is the ability to capture objectives very quickly and if there's any objectives like where it's uh, capture and hold and he's got to walk away with it he can't be using his speedster but he can do his normal movement so he's got a lot of advantage advantages for uh, when it comes to objectives now is he going to be your your brawler no but he is going to be that guy that can help support other units and we still don't know what his action cards are going to be so there could be something out there that's going to make him extremely significant and he is our first speedster so we've got pretty much everything right now except for telepathy i mean there's a broad range of powers but we don't know what telepathy so we'll see what professor x does for us uh we have to see what invulnerability like juggernaut and colossus would have and we need to see what giant growth is and i think i'm still adamant that we are going to see that with miss marvel it was even though it was really cool seeing uh kamala khan's character model revealed just there's something about the way they revealed it and its pose itself that leads me to believe that there's more since she can grow in size or in grow make her fist i mean grow different parts of her body in different sizes or just her whole body i think she's going to be our first giant growth character probably followed by if they decide to do masters of evil or the the thunderbolts the which is the good guy ver or the fake good guy version of uh the masters of evil there's a character in there called atlas that grows really big really strong 
or we might see Ant-Man become giant man later on down the line, or we might see, I think it's Ben Foster as giant man. I said this before, but I think those are, that's the direction we're going to kind of go. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're almost at that hundred followers over here on Havoc Maker Studio. And that means that our first giveaways are right around the corner. We might even be able to do it before the end of May, which will be awesome because there's a bunch of models coming out in May. And I would love to be able to give some of those away to you all. And also we got some PDFs for some RPGs that we're going to be able to give away once we get a hold of them. And we're almost at 3000 followers over at FMP Wargamers, which I will start doing some giveaways there as well. But we need your support. So hit that subscribe button, leave a comment. Seriously, let me know what you guys think about my interpretation of these rules and my speculation on the upcoming models. Anyways, you guys have yourself a wonderful day. I'll probably be back around one or two o'clock because we have day two or no, now day three of Warhammer Fest. And I'll definitely be reporting on that. Have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later.